Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3DP. This is the 11th episode of the Build the Best DIY 3D Printer series. In the last episode we finished the assembly of the extruder, and before we also assembled the other three axes as well. In today's video we are going to put together both parts, getting at the end of the video this nice result. Now I'm going to show you the components that we'll need to build this part of the printer. But before starting, be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, you will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Alright, so the first part that we'll need to start with the build of this episode are the necks. The X, Y and Z axis assembly, a 40mm M3 screw with an M3 hex nut in the middle, a 40mm M3 screw, a 30mm M3 screw and an 18mm M3 screw. I didn't have any 40mm M3 screws in my workshop, so what I did is to use an M3 threaded rod and transform it to build a screw. To do that I measured 40mm with my digital caliper and then I cutted the threaded rod to length. Then I added an M3 and a nylon nut on one of the extremes making the function of the head of the screw and finally added the M3 hex nut in the middle of the screw as we needed. Once the screws are ready, we are going to start with the build. The extruder is going to be aligned right here in the front of the 3D printer, but before we are going to follow a few steps. The first will be to introduce the 40mm M3 screw we built right here in this hole, and we will use it to guide the cables of the extruder. We are going to use a pair of pliers to screw it in place, and once completed we are going to continue with the other screws. First, the 30mm M3 screw in this hole in the right hand side. then the 18mm one on the left and finally we'll make another 40mm M3 screw using the threaded rod as we did before. Here we have it, so we'll insert it in place. The next step will be to pick up our extruder assembly we built in the last episode and first insert the cables in through the y-axis exactly as you can see on screen. Once the cables are inserted in place, we'll use the two screws we inserted before to hold the extruder in like so, and later we'll tighten both of them. Here on top we have to insert a 40mm M3 screw. Once done, as you can see the carriage is properly attached and can move smoothly. So once we have the extruder attached, we are going to install the 3D printer cable holder pieces that are these two. They will go right here and will be held by two small zip ties that I'm going to install now. Once attached, we'll cut the excess using some scissors or a pair of pliers, getting this result. The next step will be to insert a portion of 3mm nylon filament right in this hole in the extruder, and we are going to organize all the cables together with this nylon filament. To keep them together going out of the extruder, we are going to use a zip tie that we will insert right here in the bottom of the extruder, and before closing it we will insert all the cables from the sides through it. So after a couple minutes fighting with the cables, we will end up having something like this, where we have all the cables coming out of the extruder more or less in group. Next we are going to move the extruder to the worst possible position according to the distance to the motherboard, that is, in this top left corner. So once in position, we are going to measure the cables, that have to be just long enough to be able to connect into the motherboard, and once we have the right measure, we are going to cut them to length using a pair of scissors like so. At this point when we have all the cables with the correct length, the next step will be to weld them to the connectors in the correct position. I'm going to make a quick demonstration of how to weld a cable, using for the example the cables of the stepper motor that will move the filament in and out, and it's this one with 4 wires. So first step will be to separate them from each other about 5 or 6 cm, in both sides of the cable by the way. Next we'll peel 5 or 6 mm of cable, using for example a cutter, but be careful and don't cut yourself. Once we have all 4 peeled, we'll break the cables with our fingers and then we'll repeat the process with the other side of the cable, connected to the plug. Then we'll clean the wires using an electric welder, so the tin will attach better to the metal. And then we'll prepare the heat shrink tubing that we will use to cover the weldings and protect them from the possible contacts. 
So we'll cut a fat part that will cover all the cables once finished and we'll insert it in the cable. And then we'll cut four thinner ones that we will insert later on each of the thin cables. Then we'll attach it to the welding tongs like so. And we'll start welding the cables using our electric welder and some tin, as you can see here. So the red cable is welded properly. Now we're going to do the same with the blue, the green and the black ones. Once we have all four welded, we're going to use the heat shrink tubing and for that we're going to put them in place and then apply some heat on them using for example the electric welder itself or as I'm doing, a lighter. Once all four cold, we will slide the thickest heat shrink tube and heat it up with the lighter, getting this nice result. We'll have to do this same process with each of the cables we cut it before, and after all the process, you will get all the cables connected more or less as you can see here. Next, we'll put them together using a couple more zip ties and attaching the cables to the 3D printed cable holder we installed before. Once you do that, we'll cut the waist of the zip ties and your extruder bag should look more or less like this. For the next step, we'll need a cable sleeve such as this one. And what we're going to do is to insert all the cables inside of it, but we'll keep them nice and organized. So once clear, we'll start from the end where we have all the plugs and we're going to insert it slowly like this. Be patient, since this is a very slow process, but after a couple minutes, you will have it installed and it will look really good. Once we get it, we're going to insert two portions of fat heat shrink tubing, one for each end of the sleeve. So once in place, as always, we'll use a lighter to give it some heat and keep it in place. Once done in the first end, we'll repeat the process in the other end of the cables, where we have the plugs, ending up with this nice and clean result. Alright guys, we can say that we have finished this episode of the series with the extruder fully built and installed into the 3D printer. Finally, I'm going to make as always a recap of all the components we used for this build. First, for the pre-assembled hardware, we'll need the X, Y and Z axis assembly and the extruder assembly. Then for 3D printed components, only the 3D printed cable holders. For regular hardware, we'll use 1x40mm M3 screws with an M3 hex nut in the middle, 1x40mm M3 screw, 1x30mm M3 screw, 1x18mm M3 screw and a bunch of zip ties. Finally, for special hardware and tools, we'll need a 40cm nylon cable sleeve, some heat shrink tubing, an electric welder, a bit of tin and a lighter. Ok guys, so that has been everything for this short video. Remember that down below in the description of the video you will find all the links to download the modified STL files that we needed for this video, as well as the links to buy all the necessary components from Amazon through our affiliate links. If you still don't have a 3D printer to print all the 3D printer parts yourself, you can contact me by email at architects3dp at gmail.com and I will try to find you a solution. In the next video we will assemble and install the LCD panel that we will use to control the 3D printer. So be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. Hit the like button if you liked the video, leave a comment and share this episode so more people will be able to learn with the project. Finally I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of you and especially to our Patreon supporters for continuing to make this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, getting nice rewards and making me super happy you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3 dp or clicking here in the top right corner. Ok guys, so as always, see you in the next video.